Is it fair to blame strikes for the record NHS waiting list? 0207 862 is the number, so please do give us a ring. Almost 7.6 million people were waiting for hospital treatments in England at the end of June. That's up by 100,000 on the month before. So that basically means that one in seven people were waiting for treatment, which includes knee and hip replacements and even cancer care. It really is a, a staggering statistic, which some say is worsened by healthcare workers going on strike. Now, this is what the, the Prime Minister, speaking to Nick Ferrari on LBC last week, had to say. If you look at what happened, we were actually making progress. We eliminated the number of uh, two-year waiters. People are waiting a really long time. Uh, we practically eliminated the number of people waiting one and a half years. But the reason, and we were making progress on bringing the overall numbers down, what happened? We had right. industrial action. Okay. We've got strikes. And the Prime Minister's not alone. The boss of NHS England has also accused striking doctors of adding to the growing waiting list. His comments came just before junior doctors returned to the picket line today. Owen, I'll start with you. Is it fair to blame um, the strikes for the NHS waiting list? Yeah, it's the, it's the nurses and the doctors and the paramedics who've destroyed the NHS, not the Conservatives who've been in power for the last 13 years. I definitely blame NHS staff. Um, ridiculous and desperate by the Tories. A potted history of what's happened to the, to the NHS under the Tories. Under David Cameron and George Osborne, it suffered its longest squeeze, its budget, as a proportion of the economy since it was founded back in 1948. Per patient funding, in real terms, went down uh, when you take into account inflation. Um, they slashed social care budgets. That put on massive extra pressure onto the NHS. There was a staffing crisis. Jeremy Hunt, the former health secretary, now chancellor, he admitted that there was a, lack, there was a staffing problem going into the pandemic. So we had under-resourced National Health Service. The pandemic was always going to be a nightmare. It was always going to be difficult for any health service, but it collided with a health service that was understaffed and under-resourced, and that left it in a very bad state afterwards. We've got vacancies now. About 10% of nurses' places are, 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 are missing. And when we're talking about the strike, we're talking about NHS staff, nurses who've suffered a £5,000 in real terms pay cut since 2010, Paramedics have suffered six and a half thousand pounds pay cut since 2010. That is fueling a retention and a recruitment crisis because people are overworked. I mean, with nurses as well, they slashed the bursary. That meant less nurses getting trained in the first place. But when they're being paid less and less in real terms, um, when their work's got harder, that means it's harder to retain them, but it's also harder to recruit people. They're going on strike to sort that out. If the strikers' demands were met, and their salaries were increased, then we'd be better placed to recruit more staff and to keep more staff, and then waiting lists would go down. That's why it's ridiculous to blame the strikers. Larry? I think there's a lot of truth in what uh, Owen's saying, but, but, there, you cannot argue that strikes haven't made the waiting list worse. They were, waiting lists were bad, there's no doubt that we've gone into reverse. But I also say, I, I, I worry about this debate, which always frames the NHS as something that's about to, it's on its knees, it's struggling. I had to go to a small injuries unit in Whitstable in Kent uh, last weekend. I pitched up at half past six, I think it was. It closed at eight, thinking they'll never see me. Went in half past six, out half past seven. And I was amazed, because if you read wow. anything or listen, you yeah. assume, well, nothing, nothing's working. There were parts of the NHS that are working really, really, really well. Yeah, of course. And that's through really great people, proper staffing, good management. So there are bits that are working really well. Trying to get a GP appointment was a different issue. So I have great sympathy for those, in, because you're absolutely right. When you have staff vacancies, you've got more work for fewer people. And of course, the, the, the workload is awful and you then feel you should be remunerated accordingly. But also, if you, if you compare it to what's happened in the private sector, where pay has also gone down, where they don't have huge pensions, uh, they don't have huge pensions. The I think if you're a consultant, you get a very nice pension. Very, very nice pension. I read something today saying 78 grand is what some consultants will be retiring. The average that, public sector has pension is about four grand. Yeah, this is about, it is about consultants we're talking about, junior doctors. Well, nurses they, are getting gold pensions. I know, pensions. but the, it's junior doctors who are currently striking, isn't it? So that's what we are talking about, junior doctors. And they, and they have... They, are, they have very high student loans. I know they have to pay all that back. But still, compared to the average person in the street, they are very well paid. And so it's difficult to argue for somebody, for people who are on minimum wage oh. and they're paying tax because where does the money come to pay 
public sector workers more, comes from people who pay taxes. Are you taking money away from people who are not earning very much to give to people who are earning an awful no, lot of money? Uh, well, it's uh, tricky. Hold on. The whole point of that is we're supposed to have a tax system where if you're richer, you pay more, and if you're poorer, you don't. And what we should be doing, you're absolutely right, is asking those who are more well off to pay more tax. Not people. I don't want people on minimum, aid, a minimum wage to be paying more tax. I think that would be a ridiculous thing for us to argue for. I'd cut VAT, for example. VAT is a regressive tax that poorer people end up having getting and, clobbered by. And where but, do you get the money but, from? But, but I don't like this race to the bottom sort of mentality. No, but, I, no, no, I'm but, talk, but I'm being a realist. I'm being a no, realist. No, no, I'm not being, you're not being a... I'm saying that reality no. is that the, there is a kind of narrative that those in public sector pay no. have no. suffered terribly. People Larry, in the private Larry, sector have also just suffered. On, uh, the average public sector pay has fallen more than average... I pro- don't think that's... No, not, that, I saw, sorry, I sorry. I saw some stats the Larry, other day that, which, which, which dis- I, I swear, that. I swear You didn't that 100% is absolutely... Some research, it's I've seen ab- it's absolute, we can argue to get Larry, data. Larry, it's statistically just factually no, it's incontrovertible it's no, that it's public sector pay has fallen more than private sector pay. But to be honest with you, I don't like this pitting people against each I other. Know. I don't like pitting minimum, wa- work, minimum wage workers against nurses. We but should the money be has we to should come from we should be arguing it? that everyone should have a decent pension. Mm. Now, as it is. The pensions of public sector workers have come under attack as well. If you want to retain nurses and doctors and paramedics and all the people we depend on in the National Health Service, if we undermine their pay and their pensions, you, we don't need to know what will happen. It's happening now. You don't recruit more staff and you don't retain staff and then waiting lists go up. And I have to say, you're right. People can say, well, strikes are hardly helping, but it's the government's fault. They've driven. I mean, when you get for the first time in the history of the NHS, nurses voting to go on a national strike. Mm. You can't just say, well, that's the nurses being unreasonable. You have to say, how has the government driven our nurses into such a position where they feel they've got no choice but to strike? We've got an election coming up and surely healthcare is going to be one of the most important battlegrounds, you know, being discussed. Would you say from the Conservative stance that actually Rishi should just relent and, and pay... Um, NHS staff more. Yeah, because if they did that, then we would retain and recruit more staff and then with waiting lists would go down. Anyone can just using their common sense listening to what I said knows that's correct. Well, it's absolutely well, true that if, if, you're if the pay went... You're look at, you, do you, we don't know that. We, can I say, as you a, would expect, but also... But can I ask you a straightforward question? Say, if pay went up, do you I, not think I, we'd retain and recruit I more staff? I could say here, give everybody 20% and everybody would say, oh, that's great... Where does the money come from? from That's ask, the problem. From asking those who are doing very well at the moment to pay a bit more tax. I this think happens, it needs to happen year after year after year. I think we have a very high tax burden in this country already. Not for people who are very rich. I don't agree <laughs> with that. A lot of them aren't even paying any tax at all. What That's, they do is they use clever accountants to exploit loopholes. So they're not even paying tax. Let's take some to calls. pay Let's everybody in public sector more. Uh, Anne from Hertfordshire. Hi there, Anne. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Good yeah, morning. I'd like to say, I think the doctor's gone on strike is damaging the NHS terribly and I feel the NHS needs to be restructured from top to bottom. The bosses are sucking out all the money out of the NHS, the big bosses, with all their private things they do and all the rest of it. And I think it's got to come back into our public ownership and we've got to be able to, because at the end of the day, we're paying our taxes for this service. And I've waited two years to see an eye specialist because I have glaucoma and I still haven't seen an eye specialist. Am I going to go blind before I see somebody? And that is scary. Would, would you say that the Tory government really are to blame for, for this, Anne? Yeah, I think they are. I think they just want it to be, to be privatised. I think it's terrible. The man who thought of the NHS, who, who structured it all up, he must be... His family must feel, why did my dad do this? Because he gave us a fabulous legacy and we've got to look after it. Well, and a really good point Anne's making there is back in 2012, the Tories introduced the top-down reorganisation of the NHS, the Health and Social Care Act. That that legislation was three times... It was three times longer than the original legislation that founded the NHS in the first place. And what that did is introduce more privatisation. And one of the reasons that's such a nightmare for the NHS is when you get lots of private contracts, you've got to have lots of uh, managers and and bureaucrats to oversee that internal competition. And that's expensive because that money then goes to all that bureaucracy rather than to frontline service. Can we also mention PFI, though, which was a Labour policy? Well, it was expanded under Labour, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of those hostels were built under Tony Blair. I couldn't agree with you more. And so let's not just... I think there have been lots... it's, It's a huge 
business, isn't it? Mm -hmm. the, the, um, in, in the broadest sense, the NHS. It's like, I mean, how on earth do you change that to a different model, a more successful model? We've got an aging population, we've got a growing population, we've got much more complex needs of people. I mean, we've got social care. I don't know what you do, but at the moment, if you're like our lady there waiting for an operation mm. and you're told there's more industrial action, then I understand that you'll be really frustrated. But we need to, yeah. you're right, we have an aging population. We're going to have to increase funding because at the moment we have fewer doctors and nurses, fewer beds per person than in other European countries. You do, again, just basic maths. If you've got fewer beds per person, then you're going to have a less quality service. We need to expand the National Health Service. But, Otherwise... like, but it does feel like a bottomless pit. We just pour more and more and more money into it. Well, if you I mean, get we more... are spending more than we've ever spent. Well, if we, if, well, in real terms, when you take into account an ageing population, growing population, and the fact that but they've bought... slashed social care, then that funding per person hasn't been increasing the way but, it yes. should have been. But the That's total the amount of money putting into NHS is increasing. There's let's no doubt about that. Let's take another call. But not put, when well, you, take, and you take into account people's let's expanding needs. Let's bring in needs. some more calls on this. Anne, thank you so much for calling in. Let's go to Rob in London. Hi, Rob. Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think that Mr Sunak should resign and give somebody else a chance, like Keir Starmer, to run the country, because he's making such a a mess of it at the moment. And what he does is, I think he thinks he's Mr. Teflon. He just blames other people. He failed with Boris to get rid of him. And now he's failed with the NSS to actually get round the table and give them a decent working wage that they don't have to go to food banks to supplement what they spend down at the supermarkets. It's absolutely disgusting. So you think Keir Storm is the, the right man for the job when it comes to kind of clearing the backlog and... and sorting out these waiting lists, Rob. Well, he can't be any worse than what we've got at the moment. We've had 13 years or whatever it is of Conservatives, and this is their mess. They seem to forget they've been in power for a long time, and they seem to just carry on and carry on and look after their own, look after the fat cats and all the rest of it, and everybody else can just go and basically pay more tax. How do you feel about NHS staff striking? By I the think... sounds of it, you can understand why they're doing it, Rob. I absolutely understand it. They have my backing. Every time I go past in my car, not I can do that anymore because petrol's so expensive, but I toot my horn when I can, and I think that's absolutely great. We forget what they did in COVID, and I think Sunak and his crew think they're a soft touch because they did all that and didn't ask for anything, and now you know, he's, he's just trying to use them and get the best out of them without paying a proper rate for the job. Well, there's a really good point I've just made there. Rishi Sunak was one of those applauding, applauding our heroes. And now he's gone from applauding the so-called heroes, and they're not heroes, they don't call themselves heroes, they're fr frontline professionals who should be paid a proper wage. He's gone yeah. from applauding our NHS staff to blaming them, to scapegoating for the mess the NHS is in because of his policies. It is Absolutely. pretty gruesome. But we also yeah. clapped people who work in supermarkets and we clapped people who drive vans and we clapped all sorts of other key workers and they yeah. haven't been offered a 10% They should. They should. Have they? they should be offered a 10% <laughs> well, increase. Then I guess yes. it goes back but to what Which is all lovely, where we can all from. say everybody should have a gazillion percent. It's just where I, is the money? I just have to say, the reason I find that frustrating is we've gone through now the longest squeeze in wages since the Battle of Waterloo. Wages in this country for private and public sector yeah. workers has fallen. And we're now talking as though it's a utopian pipe dream about the idea that people could have a pay rise. I mean, are we now they, just resigned to the idea that people's offered, wages no, are just going to keep falling offered, forever? They've been offered 10% consultants, haven't they? Yeah. June's doctor's 10% of the pay rise. What, the, That's quite a big pay it, rise. It's a point. massive pay cut since 2010. Yeah. To to the get... world has changed. We live in a global... No, to... to... Labour Party so? very pro-immigration. We live in a, glo a global world well, we need where we just bring in more people we... and they'll work for nothing. We need immigrants to prop up the NHS at the moment. That's the problem. But in terms Which of... Which will keep wages low. Do you know how much you'd have to increase junior doctors' pay to get them back to where they were in 2010? Guess. No 35%. That's how much yeah. we're talking. That's the problem. Now, we either resign ourselves to basically just paying NHS staff in real terms, less and less. But if you do that, you're getting the service you're paying for. Mm. And that is a falling quality of service. And that means people dying. That means people being more ill. Is, is human life and human health more important than money? I think it is. Let's That's speak the difference. to Christiana in London. Hi there, Christiana. Hi. Are you there, Christiana? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Thank you for being with us. Do you think it's fair to, to blame strikes for the, the long NHS waiting lists? Well, I can see both sides of the story. Um, I used to work in the profession. Um, and, I mean, going back, you know, like somebody said, uh, we had the pandemic and everything. And 
Um, let's remember, God bless them all, what they did for us. They've saved lives. They're still saving lives. And they're to be treasured, everybody. You know, um, and I can see um, both sides of the story. I can see why they're doing it. Um, yes, of course, the NHS waiting lists are going to be longer because of what's going on. But in heart, heart of hearts, I can understand why they're doing it. Um, but really, in hindsight, um, this has been going on for years. I mean, the Conservatives have put so much pressure on the NHS over the years. There hasn't been that much funding yet in different departments. I mean, going off this a little bit, mental health and everything has all these areas that have been struck by cutbacks and everything, you know. And these people that save our lives, we go there for help and everything. They deserve they deserve the pay rise that they they need yes, you know and, you. And, and and they just do deserve it thank you so much for your for your call really appreciate that um we're going to squeeze one more caller in wasim in london hi wasim hi good morning hello good morning do you agree with christiana that the nhs staff they deserve the pay rise it's fair that they're striking yeah i mean i've been listening in since the morning i'll just say that i am a medic so perhaps my opinion is going to be biased mm -hmm. but i do believe that uh, they do deserve a pay rise only because, like Owen was saying, for the last 13 years, if you've had a pay cut, it's going to have an effect on your overall salary. So even though I appreciate if you take an isolation, 35% sounds a lot. If you take it over 13 years, it's still probably not enough. Mm. And I have colleagues, friends, like unfortunately a lot of people, I think if you're not in a profession, it's really hard for people to have a genuine understanding of what goes on day to day because you'll only understand what you hear from like politicians or what you see or what you experience but even what people experience is only a snapshot it's yeah. only you know you're only in hospital or you're only in your gp for 10 minutes but we're seeing this as our working life and our professional life and i have to admit a lot of my friends have gone to australia america or they've gone into private sector and for me i think the nhs is one of the most beautiful things about this country and it's worth saving yeah, and I, perhaps I, perhaps we need to like re reevaluate, uh, like Owen was saying, our priorities. And I think life is more important than money. And w whenever we can, we seem to find money for like random kind of projects, like say HS2 or this um, blowing up Iraq. Had lots of money to blow up Iraq, didn't we? Th th yeah, this is what I'm saying. When, when we want to, as a country, we can find the money. So I think we need to ask a genuine question. Um, can we find the money to pay, you know, all nurses and doctors? Because I, I don't think it should just is be isolated to junior doctors because mm. uh, I work with nurses who do an amazing job, probably better than doctors, to be mm. honest. Um, but I just think, yeah, we really need to think long and hard and think, you know, this is something we need to save because it's only going one way, if I'm honest. Um, and, and the strikes, yeah, they do add to the time, but <laughs> waiting lists have been going h higher and higher for years, even before... Yeah, the strikes or anything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very passionate because you know this is my future career, and of course, uh, <laughs> I think I just think it's something that's so important that it's not something we should be arguing about or, or pitting people against each other. Mm. I think that's very dangerous. I think that's I think a really we, interesting point. Reversing the question and, and thinking about what we can do to support NHS staff more. I mean, Christiana, the caller before just talking about the impact of the pandemic and we talk about the impact on patients because of the strikes and we're not talking as much about the the impact on covid just, on just on with, many nhs staff with, and what's that what's that doing you know going forward well, the point is people pointed out that normally what happens with the nhs staff is in the you get a winter crisis but then in the summer and the spring you get rest yeah. and they haven't had that and that's burnt out a lot of staff mm. yeah i think the, the point i'll just make quickly is we're just sitting here in the studio calmly casually debating whether um, doctors and nurses ha have a pay rise Right now, as we sit here having this debate, there are nurses, doctors all over the country literally saving people's lives. Mm. Right now, you know, patients are being resuscitated on tables. Emergency operations are happening. People are being run over, being rushed into hospitals by paramedics. That's happening every single day. And we're debating, oh, do they deserve to have an increase in pay after they've had £5,000 slashed off their pay yeah. in the last... 13 years. I don't know, it doesn't sit well. That is where we are going to end the debate. Wasim, thank you so much for your call. Thank you for all your calls on this.